Welcome back and today we're going to be talking about Darwin's Game Episode 6. We had a break last week but this week we're bringing everything back. So like always, let's just jump into it. So Episode 6 of Darwin's Game I thought it was going to be a lot more hype, like I thought everything was going to go down, but really, I, I think it's being set up for the next episode. Now, do not get me wrong, I still enjoyed this episode, there was nothing wrong with it. I just thought we were going to see like a big fight between the 8th clan and Kaname's group. Instead, what we got was a little bit of a flashback for Shuka's background and why she's participating in, in the game. And then we also got to see a new character, which I'm going to go ahead and guess right now 100% just from the opening and from what happened in this episode. Uh, Sota and Sui, like the little kid that was uh, that fought Shuka in the last episode, and pretty much won against her. Now we learned that his sigil is pretty much like controlling water, and and Sota has a different sigil. I'm guessing his is to uh, control ice. Maybe that's why they're both working together. And we also find out that Sota and Sui they're kind of related, but Sota, the boy version. Uh, Sui's brother, he died when he was younger and his soul, I guess, was inside Sui. And Sui kind of explained about saying, you know, this happened because she wished it from Darwin's uh, game, from the game. She kind of wished for that to happen. And I guess the game granted it to her. And now it's like two people living inside one body. And they're communicating through text, which is kind of funny. I guess that's the way they can, you know, share their thoughts. Or maybe they really don't need that, but they were doing it just for us, the viewers, to kind of see what they were thinking instead of having to voice over everything. And again, this episode, we see that this character, Sui slash Sota, uh, they're actually a good character. Like Sui, she doesn't want to kill. She, wanna, she doesn't want to do anything. We see this because while Kaname went inside the mall to or the subway or whatever the little shopping center on the ground which is full of pipes that's why they were able to beat Shuka so fast because pretty much Sato and Sui were in their ideal environment to deal with anybody like pipes full of water and Kaname went in there to rescue Shuka which he he almost didn't make it she was you know not unconscious underneath the water she she was pretty much gonna die if Kaname didn't come uh, for her and I like the little scene that happened right because Kaname and Shuka even though their relationship was kind of weirded out at the you know first episode when uh, Kaname beat Shuka she's like oh do you want to make a baby with me and what she really meant was create a clan but you know we see that she's falling for Kaname hard okay because Kaname gave her CPR and saved her life and then she kissed him kind of like a romantic scene and she tells Kaname the reason why she's participating in Darwin's game which is somebody which I'm guessing was somebody that killed you know her parents was playing the game and that's the only reason she's playing and I, I don't know how she got involved in the game because it did show her going into like her father's phone and seeing the game and she clicked on it so I don't know if it like created like a new player for her or did she take her father's like sigil powers and like he's like maybe she's playing in behalf of her father like she's playing her father's character I don't know if that's possible because from my understanding right you have to get invited into the game so somebody has to send you like the invite like how it happened with Kaname but in this scenario it looks like she kind of like found the game through her father's phone now i don't know if she was able like you know she found the game and now she got her own phone and the game appeared on her phone with her profile or if she's just using her father's phone which i think the latter is the case that she's using her father's phone and you know she pretty much just wants to bring the system down she she, she's, she just wants revenge she wants to kill whoever killed her her father and then she wants to bring down whoever is running this game, which kind of lines up with Kaname's goal. His goal is to survive. And I'm pretty sure eventually it's gonna be like, you know what, forget about surviving. We're gonna bring the whole system down. We're gonna burn everything down. And the characters that are kind of joining uh, Kaname and Shuka's clan are all kind of like 
the good type character where they all eventually gonna want to bring the system down like we don't know Ryuji the guy with the machine gun where his sigil power is being able to tell who's telling the truth and who's not we know he has something against the eighth clan we don't know the reason why but again if we know the eighth clan is like an evil organization like an evil clan I mean they were toying with somebody that was really hurt and they just threw a grenade at him just for for fun so we see that Ryuji has a sense of like a hero, of like a good character. So again, from the opening, we see that he's probably gonna join the clan as well. And they're all gonna have the same goal. We're a clan to bring the system down, bring the game down, bring the death and the carnage to an end. Now, again, I don't mind it, but I kind of feel like this is just like every anime that's kind of like a battle royale. We see this with, uh, I think, Kaboom was one of those animes and uh, Future Diary. There's, you know, there's always the one character like Kaname, which he's just really like a good person, doesn't want to kill. And I don't mind it, but I kind of want to see an anime where the main character like embraces the game. He's like, oh, we got to kill people. Let's get it. And then you start killing everybody. That, I think that would be like a really good pace. And I don't know if this can happen in the future, like maybe Kaname loses Shuka or somebody and, you know, he loses his marbles and just starts killing everything. I don't think it's going to happen, but it, it would be really cool. Now, in, in, in Sota and Sui, uh, Sui is just a good person. Like, she had Ryuji in a bind where she just froze him and he was pretty much, he couldn't do anything. And Sota, the brother, kind of, he's the, like, he has the killer instinct. He went in for the kill, and Sui stopped him. And just because of that, like, we can see he's going to be a good character. And on top of that, Shuka was like, you know, I would have killed you, like, on the spot. But since you put me in the situation where Kaname had to come and rescue me, and we kissed, and we had this romantic moment, she kind of forgave him slash her. Which, again, it's kind of funny. It's no big deal. Uh, I really thought Shuka was going to be, you know, pissed. But, hey, she, she got with my boy Kaname. So, I guess she doesn't really care. And we got the final scene, right? The final scene with the florist. Now, from, I, I don't think the florist is going to make it. Okay? I don't think he is. He stayed in the hotel for the rings because he just wants as much money as he can get for his daughter that, ha that has a heart condition. And I like what Rain uh, told him, right? He was like, look, if I was your daughter, which they're kind of like the same age, uh, the Flores daughter is 12 and Rain is 13, which is just insane that these kids are playing this game. And they're actually dealing with it, right? Because Sota and Sui, even though Sui is nice and Sota is killing anything that moves, you know, they're still like, they're still kids and they're dealing with the situation. And, you know, Rain told the Flores, like, if I was your daughter, I wouldn't want to know that my father died in an unknown location and I don't even know what happened. Because, again, that, that, that would just suck for the kid. Because not only now does he have to deal with the heart condition, because I don't think, you know, he has enough money yet. But now he, she has to deal with the fact that she lost the father. So I think he is going to die and maybe Kaname and the clan and the group are going to, you know, give uh, his daughter all the money because, I mean, this dude went ham, okay? He took out all the extra members from the 8th clan by himself. And we also figured out what the rings actually mean, like the code that they have and the different emeralds and gems. Pretty much they all mean like the numbers, if you put them in the order of their hardness, like, you know, diamond is the hardest stone and ruby and sapphire, like just the, the amount of hardness that they got, it gives you like a, like a, like a coordinates for a location, which was the center of the city. And that's where the last ring spawned. Like the, I guess the, the hidden key or the Easter egg. Once you find that item, that's when the event ends. Okay. It's not about getting the rings. It's when if, if somebody finds that item, the event ends and everybody's safe. You have to get the rings in order to survive. So if nobody finds the, the Easter egg and the event ends, you have to have what was it, like six or, or three rings in order so you so you didn't have a game over. And we see that Kaname, he kind of figured it out, and Rain also figured it out. Now I don't know if they're sharing information or if Rain is actually going by herself. And trying to get the item by herself. I don't. I don't know if she told Kaname. They were exchanging texts, 
So maybe they did share that information and the whole group is gonna meet there and get the item. Now, one thing I did notice, right, was that the eighth clan, the leader was not, was not with the whole clan, right? I think he sent all his uh, members to get the rings for more points, more money, but he went to the actual location where the Easter egg is. Because when, when he got one ring, he was looking out at the little barcode where he, where he had the, the numbers. So I think he also figured it out. And I think this is where we're going to have the big battle at the end of like this arc, where it's pretty much going to be the whole like clan, like Rain, Ryuji, Sui, Slash, Sota, and Kaname, and Shuka against the eighth clan, like main members, like the, the top dogs, including the leader. I can't wait for the next episode. Now I truly think the next episode is gonna be it. Next episode, episode seven is gonna go down. I cannot wait. So like always, go ahead and leave a like, go ahead and subscribe, and I will see you on the next episode.